baby, come give me something, oh. I'm a savage, classy, bougie, ratchet, sassy, moody. Hey everyone, Carolyn Cameron with you. Hope you're enjoying your long weekend wherever you may be. Welcome to another edition of Hockey Central at Home. Kobe Armstrong is back and we are joined by a friend in Natalie Spooner. This will be fun because I don't think the three of us have ever done TV all at once together. And Natalie, we can actually start with some news because you were part of the PWHPA, the inaugural season, if you will, just last year with the Dream Gap Tour and touring. This week, they announced their plans for season two, and that includes five base locations, three of them in Canada, Calgary, Montreal, and your hometown of Toronto. So what do you make of where the PWHPA is going? Yeah, I mean, I think last year we got a lot of momentum. We got to visit, you know, some really cool places that have NHL teams, but that have never really seen women's hockey. So hopefully this year we can continue that momentum, but also have learned a lot from last year. I think you know, having to throw together uh, a hockey season per se in a few months is pretty difficult. And that's what um, the PWHPA was able to do. So now having more time to prepare um, and to kind of figure out the format we want and, and we need as players to be able to train um, at the level that we want to. I think that going into this season, it's going to be a lot more structured and hopefully, you know, have those games planned out in advance. So we're ready. We know when they're happening. Um, and there'll be much more commitment from everyone, I guess, and also less teams. Um, so more competition uh, and also more games within a team atmosphere. Last time, kind of, they were just throwing uh, teams together when you'd go to these Dream Gap tours. So now, hopefully, getting to play in these Dream Gap tours with your team, um, more chemistry, better. I mean, once you have better chemistry, you're going to be able to show off your skills. And um, hopefully, it'll be better hockey, too, for everyone to watch. And you know you'll get ice time, but this is now in this new reality in quarantine and with COVID-19, the question is when will you get that ice time because you're not a professional league? Yeah, I mean, we've heard about the Raptors and the Leafs being able to come back and practice. And I guess the first thing that crossed my mind is, well, well when can I get ice? Um, we're not considered professional. Um, I, we haven't heard really with our national teams when that will be able to happen either because we kind of in the summer just do our own kind of skill training with skill coaches. So hopefully soon, um, once the rinks open back up, we'll be able to figure that out. But I'm itching to get on the ice. <laughs> and, and just to clarify, the PWHPA, their plans for season two, that's not in response to the NWHL announcing just a few weeks ago that they were expanding to Canada. No, I think um, – this feedback and this change was definitely based on uh, on players' feedback. I think last season, I mean, everything was just thrown together and we had no clue really how it was going to go. And um, last minute games and whatever we were asking for was kind of tried to put in there. But now really having the players' voices and the players' feedback, um, we'll be able to make it much more structured. And um, the NWHL is obviously something different and can hopefully give girls opportunities to still play hockey in Toronto. I mean, there's so many girls that play here and people need places to play. And speaking of all this, Natalie, thanks for joining us. Great seeing you as always. And we see you a lot. Like we really get to see you a lot. And, and especially through this, we get to see you out there a lot advocating for women's hockey and talking about, you know, growing up in the game and growing the game. Um, I have three little girls and, they, and you know, they love you. Natalie Spoona, they call her. <laughs> um, they're big fans though. And, you know, so like what's, what's it like kind of being – a big role model in, in, in your sport and, you know, being a, a voice um, for little girls to really look up, up to and, and, and how it's kind of progressed through your career so far. Yeah, I guess it's kind of weird when people call you a role model because I guess I never really like picture myself as a role model. I just, I'm just me. And I think um, obviously I had so many girls that I looked up to growing up and I'm kind of able to imitate what they've done. I mean, you look at Carolyn Ouellette, Jaina Heffert, um, Haley Wickenheiser have done so much for the, the women's hockey game. And I think um, you have to feel pretty grateful about, you know, not only making Team Canada, but the voice that it gives you and being able to use that voice to hopefully, you know, move, whether it's move professional women's hockey along or something else you're passionate about. Um, you know, we've been given this opportunity and I think um, it's pretty special. And 
I know when I was younger and I met Jennifer Botterill and I saw her gold medal and that was really the moment for me that was like, wow, I can be like her. Like she's a real person. Like she's a female and she plays hockey and she's really good and she wins medals. And I think, you know, sometimes it's, you know, it can be a little bit daunting, I guess, being a role model and having to put yourself out there. But I just think back to that moment and how much that impacted me and how special it was that every single little girl that plays hockey deserves to, you know, see someone like that or see someone that they can be like. Um, Cause I think that that's going to be a moment for them where they, they're, you know, going to realize that, wow, like this is my passion and, and I want to give it all. Or, you know, maybe it's not even that. Maybe they just, you know, maybe they just think I'm cool or think a player's cool and want to play hockey. But either way, I think, you know, it's, it's impacting them and, um, you know, doing something positive. You know, well, not only the, the skill level and, um, you've played on these teams where, you know, you're visible. Um, but I've been able to watch you and, and see you deal with a, a, lot of, a lot of people and fans uh, and little girls. And I think you have a, like, a great personality for it. So I think it's worked out. Now, speaking of Haley Wickenheiser, you mentioned someone you looked up to, obviously Hockey Hall of Fame induction uh, this past year. And, um, you know, didn't she, did she have any advice for her? Like you get to rub shoulders with a lot of these, you know, great players um, of the game. And, and didn't she have some great advice for you at some point going into an Olympics or? She did. I mean, I think like I was pretty starstruck when I first got on the team and like Haley Wickenheiser was there and like, she's a little bit intimidating because she's pretty intense. Um, so I joined the team in 2011 and it wasn't until like the Olympic year that I kind of got to know her a bit more and we ended up playing on a line together at the Olympics. And at first I was like, well, this is like kind of scary, but um, you know, like, I don't know. I was like pretty nervous and like timid. And she came up to me and she was like, Spooner, don't worry about anyone else thinks just play your game. And like those words have stuck with me because not only did it mean like not worry about everyone else, but it meant that like she trusted me and she believed in me. And I thought that that was really special and really cool to know, you know, the best player in the world, um, you know, believes in you and wants you to be on their line. So um, it was definitely, I, I think, a turning point in my game and, and gave me that confidence that I needed. I guess her leadership, too, it transcends hockey and sport, because we're seeing her being one of the leaders right now in Canada with Conquer COVID-19. Does that come as perhaps no surprise to you that she's rising to the occasion? Yeah, I mean, I think, too, she's always been like this, and sometimes we don't see it because she does all these things for people behind the scenes. Um, but it was definitely no surprise when this happened, and especially now that, you know, she's in med school and she gets to deal with these people um, on the daily and knows, you know, what they need, what it takes. So to see her step up and, I mean, she's been all over the place right now, just making sure that everyone has PPE and um, getting people to support. So I think it's amazing what she's doing. And, I mean, with her, I feel like there's never any boundaries. So you never know where this thing could go. I had my I had my Haley Wickenheiser moment myself when I was working out in the summer and you talk about like she's pretty intense and I uh, was with like our hockey group and she must have been I don't know why she was in Saskatoon for maybe visiting someone but she was getting her workout in um, and, yeah sorry what was that she's from Saskatchewan yeah she's from Saskatchewan but I, don't, I didn't see her around Saskatoon too much like I, I think she was mostly in Calgary if I'm not mistaken I could be totally wrong but I came in the gym and Haley Wickenheiser is like working out like an absolute machine. And I was like, Oh my God, is that Haley Wickenheiser? <laughs> I was like looking at it. I like, I went over and like interrupted her workout to say hello. And she had, and she was so kind and sweet and nice. And then as soon as like I left, she just went back to just like going so hard. I was like, just so much respect to see the way she's like just going at it, like all on her own too. Like I was in a group, I relied on group and all this, but you know, when you're, when you're, the greats of your of their sports kind of find ways to self to self motivate um and and it and truly it was so easy um for her to kind of have those comments to, to you in that key situation natalie i think right like you know you, you in passing like just the advice that you've you've had for you know young athletes or young girls in hockey and young females in your sport um don't you isn't it kind of easy just to just to give them some encouragement and kind of you know be that voice for them and kind of help guide them and give them uh, that support. I think it comes yeah. easy for you. Oh, I mean, I think it's important. I think, you know, one of the things that we don't realize is that there is a lot of girls and women who definitely uh, struggle with confidence. And I think that you find that in, in women's hockey. I mean, you see it even on the ice, like girls always want to be passing the puck. They never want to be the one to shoot. Um, 
all these things like this that we really have to work on. And um, it's sometimes hard for females to take the criticism. So I think it's also good to back that up and know that they need to have the confidence in themselves to be able to take, take the puck to the net, um, you know, own the puck. And I think that, um, you know, if, if a guy skated end to end with the puck, they'd probably say nothing, you know, where sometimes, I, I mean, I did it growing up, I skated the puck end to end, and I think I heard it a few times about, you know, you need to pass the puck more. Um, but see, you see McDavid skate down the ice and score a goal, and they're like, oh, he scored an end to end goal, you know? So I think it's about giving them that confidence that it's okay to own your talents. It's okay to be good at something. Um, and I think, you know, and even if they're not good, just give them that encouragement because you don't know where that can go. Um, you know, they may take it to heart and, and may run with it and um, find that they're, you know, they're really passionate about hockey or, you know, maybe it's art, whatever it is. I think um, it's important to find a passion. Well, you two got to know each other really well this past fall on Battle of the Blades. And Natalie, when you speak of confidence, I'm curious from switching to hockey to figure skating on national TV, what did that teach you about confidence? Ooh, uh, it definitely was something totally out of my comfort zone. So to be honest, at first I, I was not confident at all on those, with those picks. And I think obviously the more time you spend at something, the more confident you get. And I think growing up, that was always my thing. Like whether it was school, uh, whether it was hockey, I always had to feel prepared. And it was through my preparation that I gained confidence. And I think the hardest thing about Battle of the Blades was that you literally had a week to prepare. <laughs> so it was like, how confident can you really get in a week with your routine? But you did it enough times that you, you know, felt confident enough that you could fake it till you make it. And I pretty much went out there and tried to do that. Um, I think it, it kind of worked, but definitely, I mean, there was moments where, uh, you know, even I broke down and I was like, this is, this is hard. Like, I'm not sure if this lift is going to go up or if we're going to be able to do this. Um, but you know, you just, battle through it and luckily you have the support of you know your partner and you you just do it <laughs> you make it happen and you had a crummy judge judging you too right so you worry about, <laughs> oh sorry oh sorry Candy, I forgot you're here Canada's judge uh, yeah Natalie rips on me she says I didn't give her any good scores till this day the time I see her she still gives it to me but <laughs> um I have to say like I the admiration I have for Natalie because she had like the the you know she had the perma smile the big eyes, like she went for it, like no matter what, she was like, a, you know, uh, lightning in a bottle out on the ice. And she talks about all like being nervous and stuff. Like she's the one person that I kind of felt like just went for it, like really like, and didn't hide any of the nerve, like she didn't have any nerves, it appeared to me like she, she had no fear. Um, and all the while, as you mentioned, Carolyn, going back from hockey skates, um, to figure skates, all while training in both sports, like, like crazy, the hours that you put in Natalie was was wild but you hit those nerves very well to Canada's judge I couldn't tell <laughs> yeah you know you're supposed to do like those power poses like fake it till you make it just feel confident <laughs> maybe I just did those before every time I came on the ice <laughs> it's so weird well, compared to hockey because it's so visual yeah for sure well, fake, I mean, make it um I faked a hamstring injury just to get out of it speaking of that <laughs> I had zero confidence just kidding you still healing up yeah, right. You'll still be healing up when they, when they call you next time to go skate. Speaking of preparation, <laughs> before we let you go, Natalie, how difficult has it been to prepare for the next time you play hockey when you don't know when that will be just alone at home without your teammates? Yeah, it's been weird. I mean, this, this whole time is super weird. Like, I'm lucky that I have a gym and that I can train, but summer train is, training is normally the funnest because you get to be you know, around teammates in the summer, around different people too. Um, you push yourself and yeah, it's, it's definitely weird not having to go into the gym every day um, and to see everyone, but I've been trying to kind of, you know, mix up my training a little bit and, and add in some different things just to, you know, keep it interesting. I've been doing, um, we do yoga twice a week with a bunch of the girls. Um, I've been doing some bar classes. Ooh. which is like almost like dance dance training um just kind of changing it up and then obviously you know we get our hockey workout still sent um from hockey canada and then sent from my trainer um, mark fitzgerald so i've been getting lots of training in but yeah it's definitely weird um motivating yourself every day there's some days where i'm like okay i'll have a coffee first before i get into the gym some days i'm like okay let's get after it and you're a very social person like really fun to be around high energy probably the 
you know, the person in the room or in the gym that really keeps it bumping. You love singing, you love dancing. <laughs> People follow Natalie Spooner on her, what do you have, Instagram? I don't have it. I on my wife. We watch your stuff all the time. You found Instagram. a way to keep yourself entertained and keep yourself TikTok, going. But I'm still oh, yeah, yeah. TikTok. TikTok queen right here as she's, as she's rolling through it. Right foot, now left foot. Hey. 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 One hand. One hand, one hand. Two hands. Two hands, two hands. Hit your rally. Hit that rally. Do your dance. Do your dance. Now lean with it, rock with it. Lean with it. Yeah, very entertaining. So it's got to be hard just like, yeah, self-motivating yourself. Um, uh, you found some other outlets being stuck at home and, and making it fun for other people to still continue to follow you and see your personality and see what you're doing. Yeah, and um, Colby, on Mondays I started my big blue couch on Instagram yeah. Live. I had, um, oh, we've had some fun times on there. Did some makeup, some art, some trivia. And next Monday I'm having... Um, Goal, or on Monday, I'm having Genevieve Lacasse, our goalie, who plays the ukulele. So we're going to do some sing-alongs. Nice. Carol, yeah, I'll be watching that. Colby Carol knows. I'll be watching that. Monday. <laughs> Soon we will, we will have enough peer pressure to also get Colby on Instagram. He's coming close by using his wife's, but we're almost there. Yeah, this is what yeah. we do in quarantine. I have nothing else to do. Natalie, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. Oh, go ahead, Colby. Oh, I just wanted to say it's fun to go on, on Natalie's uh, Instagram live. I don't know how my wife's thing. And we should watch her and I, I write comments into her. I, I, I always thought it was Mel writing <laughs> no, it's, all, it's, it's my wife and I together doing it. It's fun. It's great. Oh, that's too funny. If it weren't for no. Mel, this shot right now on Zoom for Colby would have never even been set up. No, so yeah. hopeless. Good production value. Natalie, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be watching on Monday. And uh, Colby, thanks again. Everybody, have a great weekend. This has been another edition of Hockey Central at home.